Hi everyone, and good afternoon on a lovely Sunday afternoon. Thank you for joining me. I am Cindy Harrison, your host of Tips from the Table. So welcome, and today's program is going to be about how to prepare your surfaces. And that is, I have a multitude of surfaces here that I want to show you and share with you the proper preparation uh, to make your pieces more correctable and um, better as a finished product. So let me turn the camera around. Let's see. So here's a bunch of different um, surfaces that you might possibly be looking into using. And the most popular is probably wood. There's a birch ply and then there's some pine, just as a couple samples. Of course, there's many types of wood, we all know this, but very popular is the birch ply and tends to be very smooth. So you still would wanna seal it because it still has a certain amount of porous um, to it that you want to put that seal over it so that your paint doesn't get absorbed like a stain. Unless that's what you're looking for, then you wanna put a nice sealer. The sealer I use is called Multi-Purpose Sealer by DecoArt Americana. And I'll put one coat over that and then take a light sand sanding disc or sandpaper and when you sand, always sand in the direction of the grain of the wood. As you see here, it's going this way. And on the sides, it's going that way. Not that you can see it so much. You see it better on that side. So always sand in the direction of the grain of the wood. The pine, when you put the multipurpose seal over it, will raise the grain. And then you will have to sand it to get it smooth again. Now, if you want to try and expedite your painting, I would suggest mixing this with your base coat color. You can mix this with any of the Decor Americana paints, acrylic paints, and you can get one coat of color on there at the same time that you're sealing it. You still have to sand it, but the next time you put a layer on, you can go straight to the paint and put that on there. So that's wood. The next surface, clay pots. This is a time of year where a lot of people like to paint on the clay pots. And you see how dull that inside is. That's what it was on the outside until I covered it with a coat of my multi-purpose sealer. Clay pots are porous, so you wanna make sure you put this coat on here and it will take less paint and be more correctable if you have the sealer on your surfaces, the same with wood. It'll take less paint to give you an opaque coverage than it would if you let it just be natural and suck up all the paint. If you're going to put a plant in here, you probably wanna seal the inside too because the porousness will absorb the moisture and possibly flake off your paint if you're not careful. Here's another popular surface, paper mache. 
It doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not, it's paper, so it is porous, is it, but it's not as porous as, say, the clay pot or the wood. However, you might want to put a nice light coat of the multi-purpose sealer on that, just so that when you put the paint on there, if there's any water in your brush and you put the paint on here, it will make the paint paper bubble. Now, if you would like to cover your pieces with white to begin with, you can also use a product called Gesso. And it comes in white or it comes in black. And you can use these products as well from DecoArt to um, prepare surfaces. This is great if you're going to go and paint on, say, um, a notebook cover, like a composition notebook cover that has a lot of design to it. And you want to cover that design real thick. This is equivalent to like a kills or a bins in the paint department of the, you know, home, home, um, what do they call home decor shops. Okay. When you're painting your walls and you want to cover some darker color, you put a coat of this on first. Well, it's just like that, just like that. Now, if you wanted to paint on cork, DecoArt has a product out called Cork Sealer. And you can paint on a cork, a design on cork after you apply two coats or, or more of this product and seal that cork real good. And then you can paint on that, which is really a cool idea. Next I have a ceramic mug. And I have a tin can, an aluminum can, cookie can. You can paint on these and glass bottles by first preparing it with a wash of either vinegar and water or rubbing alcohol. Wash that down. Lightly sand your surface to give it some tooth. Take off the sand dust with a very um, damp, not very damp, but lightly damp, lightly damped um, a paper towel. Okay, and you can then spray it with a Rust-Oleum primer. Now, I love this stuff and I use it all the time. And here's the lid. So this is the same lid that's here, I've got here. And I sprayed it with the primer. And then I put a coat of paint around the edge because I'm gonna be painting this today on Paint With Heart. But that's what that looks like. You, it covers up a multitude of sins. So you can spray this with that as well, or you can go right to this after you've cleared it with that. You can go right to this with glass paint, gloss, uh, glossy glass paint or glass markers. DecoArt puts out some markers for glass. And... I know I had them somewhere. I didn't get them. Sorry. Um, but DecoArt glass markers work really well on this. But again, clean this off. And the reason why we're cleaning the metal off is because our fingers have touched it and our fingers are full of oil. So you want an oil will, you know, Thompson deck sealer, right? When it rains, all the water bubbles up. Well, that's what's going to happen here. The, the paint that you use is going to bubble up because it's not going to adhere to your oils of your finger. So that's why we need to wash those surfaces off really good. You could also spray this with some Rust-Oleum uh, primer or there are some other um, sprays out there that you can use to spray that with to prep that for your, for your project. So let me show you just quickly a review. If you're going to use a clay pot, paper mache, or any type of wood, we're going to seal it with at least one coat of multi-purpose sealer or a coat of multi-purpose sealer plus your base coat color. If you're going to do 
paint on cork, you're going to use a cork sealer, which is also good if you're not going to paint on it, but you're using it maybe for the bottom of your coasters and you don't want it to absorb moisture on the table. It's still good to seal it. If you're working on something that has a lot of design already on it and you want to go over that, a painting, an old painting that you don't want to um, keep and you, but you can reuse a canvas, you can always cover it with gesso and paint a new painting over top of it. So you want to have some of this on hand. And right now, last but not least, our cans and our glass or ceramics wash it down with some rubbing alcohol or a vinegar water mixture sand it lightly with a very soft sanding pad wipe it off with a very um, lightly damp paper towel and then you can spray it with some primer or you can you can brush on a, a primer if you want, but I find that I want my ceramics and my tin to be as smooth as they started out to be. So I don't like brush strokes. I would rather spray lightly a few coats, let it dry. If I need more to cover the lettering, I'll spray it another time, but let the layers dry in between. And it takes a little longer and it will be tacky. So you want to want to, you know, just let it set if you can to dry. And then you'll be ready to go. When all the product is, all your painting is done and you have finished your design, you're happy with your design and you want to move on, you should always, 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 well, again, everything is written in pencil in the decorative painting world. But you want to try and seal your painting, acrylic painting, with something. This here is a Duraclear Soft Touch Varnish. I use this a lot, and it's a, a satin finish. It's very it hardly, it's not glossy. It doesn't have a high gloss like a high glass gloss. Another thing I use is called Americana Acrylic Sealer Finisher. So if I want to spray something instead of brush on, I can use this. And I would probably use this for surfaces like the cup and the tin because it's round and smooth. And then another product I like using if I'm doing things, uh, coasters for the table, I love to cover it in triple thick because this will be, hi Blake, this will be a nice, it, it's a self-leveling product, but it leaves a thick coverage over top of your, of your surface. so that it will resist moisture. It's high gloss. You see how that's high gloss? Yet it's, it leaves a nice protective coating over your surface so that the condensation from your um, mugs, cups, whatever, won't, won't damage your painting. Also, too, you can put things in it you can see this it has a gem in it. So while it's still wet, you can place any kind of mixed media pieces you want to place in there or even glitter, sprinkle it with glitter. This, you, when you use this product, you want to make sure that whatever your surface is sitting on is level and that you are not going to be touching it anytime in the near future because it needs an overnight to dry, to cure. So this is not a a product that you would use and have a immediate results. So I want to thank everybody who um, joined me today here on tips from the table.
I am here to answer any decorative art, any decorative painting questions that you may have. The, the purpose of this show is to share with you the knowledge for different brushes, different techniques, and different products. And I'm hoping to be able to teach the world to paint one brushstroke at a time. And to do that, we have to start from the very beginning as we have. So previous episodes are vis uh, visible on Bubbler Media, on the Bubbler Media Facebook page, YouTube channel, and website. And my producer will put the links in the bottom. So you can go there and see the first uh, several episodes of paint uh, tips from the table. And they talk about the different brushes and what the different brushes can do, the techniques that we use these brushes for. And hopefully you'll be encouraged to pick up a brush. But um, if there's any questions, please put them in the comments. And I will get back to you as soon as possible. And next week, we'll start on uh, some products or some, well, I don't know what we'll start on, but stay tuned and find out next week on Tips from the Table. So thank you very much for coming, and I hope to see you again next week. I'll be rolling that in one second. Hang on, I keep talking. <laughs> Are you there still? She doesn't hear me.